Let's worship God together. Amen. Hallelujah. Welcome, everybody, to uh, Faith and Victory Church, and um, praise the Lord. Thank you, Nathan, and uh, we apologize. We uh, realized that the um, our um, web mic here was overdriving with the music, so I think that got adjusted during the song. Uh, we apologize for that taking place. Um, it's um, It was set for my voice and um, not for music, so... Um, but we got her fixed, I think. Didn't we? Didn't we get it fixed? Yeah, okay. Um, again, um, we apologize for that, but it was still it was still good. Amen. Hallelujah. He is holy. 
He is holy. Praise the Lord. Well, uh, we look like right now it'll be um, at most two more weeks after today of uh, virtual. Uh, hopefully, it will be sooner than that. Um, we will um, we will notify you as soon as we know for sure. Pretty sure we'll be going at least in person by the 29th. Okay, and um, we're looking forward to seeing y'all again. Uh, it's been since the week before Christmas, so. Um, and this has nothing to do with COVID. It just has to do with um, meeting arrangements. And uh, we believe that we're, we're, we're on track to um, track. We're on track to uh, be in person at least by the 29th, if not sooner. Hallelujah. All righty. Well, um, you know, last week we talked about uh, living for him, living for Jesus, um, making our lives coming into the new year and reflecting and being um, committed to serving the Lord and honoring the Lord with everything that we do. Um, I think one of the things that um, there's a tendency when um, we, we teach certain things, you know, the Bible does promise us blessings. The Bible promises us, you know, um, the benefits of, of being in the kingdom of God. But uh, sometimes we take that to an extreme where we're just so caught up with that, we forget about um, submitting our lives, um, being, as Paul said, a slave to the Lord, uh, you know, a servant to God, uh, committed to him, yielded to him in every arena of life. And um, we get so focused on um, all that we have with God that we forget about being in service to God. And, um, and I'm not trying to like compromise the word or, but I'm trying to say is that we have to be aware that our lives are in servitude to him. Amen. Yeah, we are sons of God, but Paul also said he was a, a, a servant. Okay. And so, um, and he, he wrote all about who we are in Christ. Um, so it just we just you know we need to be uh, aware of keeping a balanced prospectus on our relationship with God. That um, although He wants to bless us and love on us and do all kinds of things for us, we are in His service, Amen. And um, our goal and our desire should be as living for Him. In order to do so, we're going to have to walk with Him, Amen. We're going to have to walk with God. Now, I grew up classical Pentecostal. And I mean, you know, every Wednesday night was, everybody come down to the altar and pray. Seek the Lord. And we, we can get traditional about that. I understand that. Um, but at the same time, there was something special about those times of the presence of the Lord that, that kept us humble and um we don't need to abase ourselves to, you know, you're just a lowly, no good worm, scum of the earth type thing. That's that's extreme. But we need to also not get so caught up with that I'm a king and I'm a queen and I'm a my children are princes and all this stuff. So we're in this other extreme. We we need to keep a a, a, hum, a, a humility about us. Um that the fragrance of the presence of the Lord is available. Amen. Well, you know, we, we're, we're, we're special. Well, we've been made special. I am worthy because he made me worthy. Okay. And um, so just, these are just things that we need to continue to be aware of and look toward. And I want to talk today about walking with God. And if you go to Genesis, the fifth chapter, please. Genesis chapter 5. So glad to have all of you. Uh, thank you for joining us and being with us. Praise the Lord. And we do look forward to seeing you in person. To, uh, trust me. Uh, we, we do miss seeing you and being with our family. But such good things are coming our way. Um, it's it's going to be a whole new world um, going forward. Praise the Lord. And uh, verse 21 of Genesis chapter 5, 
And Enoch lived 60 and five years and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God. Underline that phrase. And Enoch walked with God. Um, and he begat Methuselah 300 years. After he begat Methuselah 300 years, and he begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and five years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Now, God beat Scotty to beam me up. Hallelujah for you Star Trek fans. Praise the Lord. Enoch walked with God and was nice, 365 years old. Um, when we look at the conditions of the earth in the day of Enoch, Genesis 6, 5 says, And God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only, listen to this, only evil continually. He was living in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. Yet he walked with God to the extent that God didn't even let him taste uh, natural death as most people would. God just took him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so we have here a, a, a circumstance. And so we, we, we kind of can look at our world today and go, oh my, uh, but it would have been easier for Enoch in his day to look at our day. No. Their hearts were all evil continually. And now we do live, we do live in a world where there's so much evil thought and evil uh, activity and evil strategies and evil plan. And it's, it's, it's quite literally uh, an open manifestation of the spirit of Antichrist in the earth. So much so that the minds of men and the hearts of men are uh, veiled against the consequences of the evil that they think up and dream up. As a matter of fact, they think they're right. I mean, some of the stuff that you hear people uh, say and believe and do, I mean, you think anybody with any sense would know that was evil, but um, not when you are operating under the influence of the spirit of Antichrist. And so that's in the earth. And we as the church are living in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. I mean, we have just had this huge trial with the woman who got all the uh, little girls or teenage girls to go to Epstein's thing to have relationships or sex with older men, powerful men from all over the world. And even politicians in America his names are on the list of those who were, were there. Um, we don't know all who all were actually engaged, but there's a lot of stuff that went on on that place. And people think it's normal. We find perversion normal. And we don't want to talk, we don't want to say, well, if you say anything bad about it, then um, you're not walking in love. That's not true. That's absolutely not true. We've adopted a narrative that love means you accept sin. No. Love means you love the person enough to tell them that Jesus will redeem them from their sin, but you don't accept or condone their sin. You love the sinner, but you hate the sin. There's no way around it. And, um, you know, and then you can call me whatever name you want to call me. You can sit out there and call me homophobe and all this kind of stuff. I really don't care. I will tell the truth no matter what you call me. Because I love you enough to say what the Word of God says. And if you can't deal with that, that will be between you and the Father. But I must be responsible for sharing the truth. So, in his day, he walked with God. In church, we cannot compromise the Word of God to placate the world at the expense of offending God. I'm looking for the enthusiastic responses out there. I didn't really see them fly out there. Hello? We are not called to placate the world. We are called to honor and walk with God. And let the chips fall where the chips fall. 
And we walk in love, of course. We love humanity. We, we're, our desire is for them to be free. Our desire is for them to be reconciled to God. I, we have the ministry of reconciliation. Be ye reconciled to God. That is our calling. That is our purpose. Um, as all of us are really evangelists. Amen. And so, um, as Enoch walked with God, how did he succeed in walking with God? Well, he walked in divine direction. If you're going to walk with God, you got to follow his plans and purposes and not your own in order to receive divine direction from God. In order for God to tell you and lead you and guide you, you're going to have to decide that you live according to his wants. And that goes back to living for him. I'm not living for me. One of the pitfalls of, of the prosperity message, and I believe in biblical prosperity. Don't 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 think that I don't. Um, one of the one of the um, pitfalls of um, extreme grace teaching. You know, you're pre-forgiven. Um, you don't need to repent, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Some of the the pitfalls of those extremes are we become satisfied with self-centeredness and not honoring or pleasing God. And some will come along and say, well, if you're really living under grace, you, you won't, that won't happen. That's not true. Else Paul wouldn't have wrote some of the things he wrote. You know, uh, only use not your liberty as an occasion to the flesh. He wouldn't have wrote that if that liberty made us walk with God automatically. So we have to understand that we got to walk with God and Enoch walked in divine direction. He walked in agreement with God. Amos 3.3 3 says, uh, can two walk together except they be agreed? Well, how does that happen? Well, you got to spend time with God before you make plans and get his plans. Now, we always like this. You know, we used to say this. A lot of times we go to God and say, Lord, bless this mess. When the answer is, Get his plan, it's already blessed. Hello. In other words, there's a lot of times we want to do something a certain way. Israel wanted a king. It was not God's plan. Hello. And he gave them the king. And when Samuel went before the Lord about it, um, in despair, the Lord said, they didn't reject you, they rejected me. And then they anointed, and they got to choose who they wanted to be king. They wanted somebody whose head was above, shoulders were above everybody else, and they could write in and say, "This is our king," and you know, and all the different things that they wanted. And um, what ended up happening, Saul turned out to not be a really good king. He was very carnal, hello, and very fleshly. And uh, he wanted to serve the Lord, but his flesh got in the way. God never wanted them to have a king. So let's find God's plan and it'll be blessed. You don't need to get your, we're always wanting to present our plan. I remember I was with in a meeting um, a number of years ago and um, a well-known missionary and his wife were there and they were, they were ministering. And um, all of a sudden uh, the wife goes, uh, I give God ideas and he likes my ideas. And um, the host of the meeting, well, I'll just tell you who that was. It was Dr. Summerall. Got up, ran up there, pulled the husband and wife apart, said they just flew in on the plane, got retired, they're going to the hotel with C tonight, and shut it down. There was a, you know, I give God ideas? Are you kidding me? I said, are you kidding me? You don't give God. There's nothing that you can come up with he ain't already thought of. And he likes my ideas. Wow. No, we walk with God. We, uh, my, my graduation uh, service from Rama Bible Training College in 1981, um, Brother Roberts, Brother Or Roberts preached our commencement. And he ministered the sermon. I, I mean, I, I still remember the title as much as anything that he's, he said was tracking with God. And he used a scripture in the Old Testament about 
the hind, the, the deer and the hinds feet. And he talked about how that the hinds feet, when, it, when it's running, uh, the front feet go down and the hind feet come up and land in the exact same spot uh, as, it, as it runs. And he says, we're to track with God. We're to be like the hinds feet. We're to step as God leads us. Hallelujah. And um, that, that has stayed me well all these years, these 40 years, 40 plus years now. Hallelujah. Uh, it'll be 41 years in, in uh, May of this year. And uh, can two walk together except they be agreed? You can't come up with a plan that God doesn't have and expect him to bless it. He may let you do it, but there's going to be trouble. Amen. I even, I, I may be mistaken, but I believe when God, Samuel went to Israel and told them there was going to be problems if they had their own king, they said that'll be on us. And it was. And it was throughout the existence of Israel. And so we cannot um, get our plan because, because uh, it's not going to be the way God wanted it. Now you may get by with it. You may, you know, exist with it. <clears throat> um, you may want to make decisions that are in, uh, you think are your best interest because it doesn't look like what God's doing is right. Well, you know, just because it don't look, it don't mean it. Hello. Amen. So spend time with God, get his answer. Amen. And then walk it out. Well, I need an answer right now. He's not talking to me. Um, you know what? It's easier to be late. This is going to have to stop and go back and start over. Amen. You're running five minutes late, so you're doing 85 and a 45. Well, by the time you get out of jail, you will have missed whatever you were trying to make. Amen. <clears throat> Enoch walked by faith. Hebrews 11, 5 and 6 says, By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death <coughs> and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Hallelujah. That he pleased God. Isn't that great? He pleased God. You know, he, uh, Hebrews 11, 6 uh, says, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. Let it cometh to him, or please God. Let it cometh to him, must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. And so we see Enoch walking in divine direction, walking in agreement with God, um, walking by faith. So we as believers, what are we to do? Well, obviously, we're to walk by faith. Uh, Romans 4.12 says, um, And the Father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had being yet uncircumcised. Hebrews 10.38 declares, Now the just shall live by faith. That's that scripture in various forms, Romans 10.17 and uh, Habakkuk declared this uh, this in just a slightly different phraseology, um, but the just shall live by faith. We're to live by faith. Now, living by faith does not mean you get to make up all the plans and then tell God to bless it. That's not living by faith. Amen. Um, I know of a lot of people who live on calendars one, two, three years out. You know, everything's planned out. Boy, that sure didn't leave any room for God to change your direction or, um, you know, whatever. Amen. And that we'll get to more of that walking in the spirit. Um, Hebrews 11, 6, without faith, it's impossible to please him. For they that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So living by faith is an absolute essential aspect of walking with God. Well, why? Well, one reason is faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. 
you're going to, you know, in order to walk by faith, you've got to be hearing God's word and knowing what God is saying. And let me say this, not just the parts you like that make you blessed with money or houses or lands or every little desire and whim that you come up with. Amen. How about submit yourselves, therefore, to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Some people don't like the submission part. They just want to show up for the, you know, uh, pass out goodies part. They think it's like going up to somebody's door and knocking on the door and um, God's going to the door and hand you candy. It's not always that way. There are times you will go through hard places. Ah, uh, if I'm blessed of God, if I'm walking under his grace and I'm walking my faith, I won't ever encounter any trouble. You're stupid. I I'm sorry. That kind of came out too quick. You're not Bible learned. I mean, I I'll try to rephrase that. That was kind of, that was harsh. I don't want to be too harsh. But that is, that is not true. Go read, um, I believe 1 Corinthians chapter, uh, maybe 11, or maybe or 2 Corinthians chapter 11, where Paul goes to this long discourse of all the things he went through. And please don't tell me Paul didn't walk by faith. Perils in the city, perils in the country, perils of his countrymen. You know, three days and nights, um, he was in the deep, let down over the wall, stoned, left for dead. I mean, he goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on talking about the things he went through. Yet, he finished his course with joy. He kept the faith. Amen. So when we walk by faith, does not mean you... The, the fact that the Bible says this, the, fight, the good fight of faith means there's an enemy out there. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, mights, dominions, rulers of the darkness of this world. Uh, you know, there are some things we did back in the early days of preaching faith, and I'm going to say this, the second generation, we only heard parts of what the Hagans and the um, Summerall's and the uh, CM Wards and the um, um, PC Nelsons said and the daddy see i mean just daddy seymour's and john g lakes we only preached the part that was uh hunkadori go out and listen to brother hagan's tapes or tape series or or minute or, or audio series now because they're only mp3 about him riding down the road at night because his tires are so bald that if he rode during the day they would blow because it would get too hot so he would ride at night from one meeting to another so he wouldn't blow the tires on his car that was so bald. And even get it to the point he had to sell his car for junk. Hello. And walk and take the bus while he was preaching faith. Well, if he had real faith, he come on now. Y'all here, you go home. We, we've, met, we give, we've given a false impression that if you... Live by faith, you won't have any troubles. And I know Brother Shambach, the preacher says, I, I, you don't have any troubles, all you need is faith in God. And, and I understand what he's saying, and, and there's, there's a side of that that's true, that whatever trouble you encounter, what you need is faith in God, you'll overcome and win. Okay? Thank you, Brother Bill. Uh, 2 Corinthians eleven twenty six, 26, uh, on Paul's perils. Okay? But the truth, it really is, that you walk by faith, but you have to live by faith through difficult times. It really doesn't take a lot of faith to live through the easy times. When everything is just lovely. Hello. And you can go out and brag about how that because you're, you're, you're so great at living by faith. You don't ever run into any trouble. And, um, please don't set yourself up for failure or disappointment. Please don't. Because you, you, are, you are really setting yourself up for, for a really difficult place. I can tell you, you know, we, we, we've encountered stuff, particularly in the past five, six years. Um, and lots, I mean, it's like everything in the world unleashed on us. Lost the, um, 
the, the people that we released from in the business part for almost 30 years. Let me see here. 20, 88, 88 to 2016. 28 years didn't want us to come back. They wouldn't let renew our lease. We had to move out. We've been nomads ever since without a home. Renting from a community center, borrowing a church, um, and in the pro and, and then in the middle of all that, my wife went through uh, was diagnosed with cancer. I uh, stepped on a nail and had an ulcerated toe. They wanted to cut off. Um, I mean, you know, there was all kinds of stuff going on all at the same time. She's cancer free. My toe, I still have. Hallelujah! And our days of wandering in the wilderness were are, are coming to a close. Hallelujah. Very soon. Praise the Lord. But it was it was not a pleasant journey. We felt like we'd lived 40 years and six. It seemed like that sometimes. You know? And, and you can question, well, Lord, you know, uh, if we're doing what you told us to do, why are we going through this struggle? Why are we dealing with this? But you know what I, 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 I could only get back? is keep obeying God. Keep obeying God. There were days that you got to think, I can't hear, I couldn't hear God. If he walked in here with a fuchsia coat and purple pants with a white hat and a pink feather in it, I wouldn't know, I wouldn't hear God's voice. Because obviously, because of what I've gone through, I couldn't be hearing from God. And those thoughts come. But then you just got to settle yourself down and go back and say, I will obey God. I will do what God told me to do. And uh, one of the best pieces of advice I can ever, ever, ever give you is go back to the place that you last know, you know you heard from God. Hallelujah. And start there. Praise God. And you know what God told me to do? He told me to come here and take this church. And so that's what I did. And that's what I do. And even though the, you know, even people uh, suggested I quit and leave. People mocking you, saying, "Well, if, if he was really doing anything, they wouldn't be whether they wouldn't be going through this." See, we can't, we cannot measure our walk of faith based on what other I, people's idea of a faith walk is. If that were true, Paul would have quit. Are you here? If that were true, the martyred uh, apostles would have quit. We can, you know, that if that were true, the Martin Luthers would have quit. Pentecostal preachers back in the early part of the last century were actually physically tarred and feathered and run out of town, paying the price to bring a, re a restoration of the of the baptism of the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, and the gifts of the Spirit. But they obeyed God. Old Roberts paid a price for obeying God. Brother Hagen paid a price for obeying God. Those people paid a price for obeying God. But Sister Hagen wrote a book, and I believe it was something like this, with the title, The Price is Not Greater Than the Glory. Hallelujah. The price is not greater than the glory. Can you say amen? Amen. And so, um, we have to walk by faith and walking by faith is, it's just like God told Abraham, get thee out of that country, out of thy father's house, away from that kindred and go into a place that I will show thee. And then he told him that his seed would be as the sand of the seashores and the stars of the heavens. And it took 25 years for that one promise to come to pass. Man, if we don't get it in 25 seconds, we think we, we start over. Hello? Y'all hear you going home? Okay. Uh, the title of that book is uh, by Sister Higgins, The Price is Not Greater Than God's Grace. I had it out partial way. I had some of it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <coughs> Companion with walking by faith is walking in the spirit. Romans 8, 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, 
but after the Spirit. Now, I know that there are many people who are going to come along and go, well, that last part of that first verse isn't there because they, they use that, that to uh, state that there's never any condemnation to you because you're in Christ Jesus. And um, that phrase is used in verse 4 as a conclusion to this paragraph or to this thought anyway. And um, not Romans 1, 1, but Romans 8 and 1. Um, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. That is concluding this, you know, that, that Romans 8, 1 through 4 is all one thought. So it is who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. One, like we, we kind of go back to, to, and segue on a couple of something I said earlier. One of the drawbacks to some of our extreme teachings are misunderstanding of teachings. Hearing the part that tickles our ears and sells the books and the tapes and gets big offerings and missing the other part. Driving at night so your tires don't blow. Just because I don't wear hand-tailed suits don't mean I don't walk by faith. My wife is cancer-free because of faith. I have my toe. That doctor looked at my toe four months after they wanted to cut it off. And he said, Mr. Taylor, I tell you what, I'm going to call that toe healed. And before I thought about it, it came out of my mouth, Doc, that's what I've been doing for four months. He said, well, whatever you did worked. Praise the Lord. And he would tell me, he said, I'm really not doing anything. They would debrade it and, um, you know, we would, we would put the, you know, the silver gel on it and bandage it and clean it. And I'd go in every two weeks and he would debrade it and they had me on antibiotics and that kind of stuff. But, um, and every time I'd go, he would just say, it's getting better. It's getting better. It's getting better. Keep doing what you're doing. Finally, actually told me that I should be a case study of what to do, uh, in an ulcerated extremity situation. And I said, doc, I told you at the beginning. I knew how to believe God. I would do what you told me to do, but I know how to believe God. And he couldn't argue with me because he told me people in your case don't keep their toes. That's what he told me. He said, your situation, they don't keep their toes, but I have mine. I can take it off and show it to you, but you don't really want to see my toe. Hallelujah. Um, I'm not sure that that would be really beneficial to you. It's there. Trust me. The whole thing. Praise the Lord. Amen. Um, but we can't walk after the flesh. We got to walk after the spirit. It's not all about making sure that you look great. You have everything on the planet. What does God want? What if God wants you to do something? Brother Hagin shared this one time. He, um, they were in a house. They were pastoring a church. You know, they had, a, they actually said it was the best pastorate, the best situation they'd had in all of his years of ministry. And the Lord dealt with them over a whole winter about going on the field, on the field ministry and uh, leaving the church. <laughs> he got out there on the field ministry and he felt like he had totally flopped. Totally flopped. I mean, he couldn't hardly make ends meet. They were struggling to get food on the table. I mean, it was it was hard going. But you see, he continued to obey God. And boy, what God did with the ministry and the, and the testimony of it today. It's still going forth. People carrying out the mandate the Lord gave him as we went to Ramah and became part of what God called him to do. It was passed on to the next generation to carry forth uh, that purpose and calling, hallelujah, to go teach my people faith. And um, 276 or three? 270 plus Bible schools all around the world. 70,000 plus graduates around the world. The sun does not go down where a Raymond graduate is not preaching the gospel. 282 campuses. All right, 
95,000 graduates worldwide. Hallelujah. Those numbers are going, they just keep going up. They keep going up. 15,000 plus every month are in school. Somewhere, you know, in the different Bible schools combined. That legacy is going on. Yet there was a time when he left that minute, that pastor. It looked like he had made the big, but God t- called him to do it because he, he went through a hard place to get to where, but he walked by faith and obeyed God. By, he was led by the Spirit. When you're led by the Spirit, you're going to have to walk by faith. Many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God, Romans 8, 14. Now, this could be interesting. This I say then, Galatians 5, uh, 16, and then 25. Walk in the Spirit, you'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now, we're told that if you're under grace, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Sorry, but the Bible says walk in the Spirit and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. If we live in the Spirit, verse 25, we will also, let us also walk in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The grace of well, Titus 2, 11 through 14 states this, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of a great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that we might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. But what did he say? In Galatians, if you walk in the Spirit, you'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh. He talks about denying, you got to live in the, you got to walk in the Spirit to be able to do Titus. Hallelujah. So walking in by faith is going to be a co-companion of walking in the Spirit and vice versa. That as God leads you to do things, you're going to have to walk in faith to carry them out. Amen? I said amen. Paul was on his way to preach somewhere and the Spirit forbade him to go there and send him somewhere else. And they got put in jail for obeying God. But you still live by faith. And then at midnight they sang and, and, and sang praises and glorified God. And then the jail shook and opened the door. All the prisoners were in there. They were so, and the jailer jumped in, was about to kill himself. And Paul says, Do thyself no harm, for we're all here. The Lord has sent his angel. But that was after he got led by the Spirit to go there and get thrown in jail. Well, if I'm following God, I won't ever have anything bad happen. See, that's why you got to walk by faith. Because following God, walking in the Spirit, will require walking by faith. Can I get an amen or two out there? Hallelujah. <clears throat> We're also to walk in the light. 1 John 1, 7 says, We walk in the light as he is in the light. We have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Well, how do we walk in the light? Psalm 119, 130. The entrance of thy word giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. This goes right back to being in the word. See, everything that we need to do is based in a relationship with God and feeding on his word. Amen. Living for him. <clears throat> Letting his spirit guide us. Walking out his plan by faith. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? Psalm 119, 105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. And a light unto my path. So we got to walk in the light. Amen. Amen. See, God doesn't want you. Now, listen, they may, he may tell you to go do something and you don't see the end of it yet, but you're walking in the light of his word that the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. Amen. Now, I'm going to tell you, we're in a process. We're going to have a sermon sometime soon on the journey. And it's going to be a good one. Hallelujah. And uh, most of our congregation knows the journey, but we're going to share it with everybody else. And, um, and I'm going to tell you, so much of that journey was 
his, his ordering our steps, us being faithful in the places that where the cloud wasn't moving. Well, it looks like everybody else on the planet, God had their cloud moving for them. Let me tell you something. Okay, I'm just going to throw this out there. If your cloud ain't moving, you stay put. Do not move without the cloud. Thank you for your enthusiasm. It's true anyway. Hallelujah. Got to walk in the Spending time in the word, knowing the word of God, meditating on his word. Hallelujah. Brings light to your life. Illumination. It teaches us. Hello. It teaches us how to be led by the spirit. It teaches us how to live by faith. It teaches us how to walk in the light. Amen. Praise God. And one of the last points, the last point I'm going to make on this is this. We are to have fellowship. We're to walk in fellowship one with another. There are no islands unto themselves. We need each other. Amen. And this is, this is a problem because so many people have trust issues. And the reason so many people have problems with trust issues is there's a lot of people out there who, who have, under the guise that, um, uh, what's the word, I, 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 how can I say this? We've encountered this. As, as a pastor, I have encountered the, my ministry is more important and bigger than your ministry. Therefore, uh, if I take this person or this group of people or whatever from your church to mine, it's fine because mine's more important. I even had one come and tell me, right, right in, in, in my church, uh, I talked to so and so about leaving, coming, helping us because I knew you wouldn't mind. Right. And I did, I'm sorry, I, told, I do mind. I need them. This church needs them. And, um, but you can't think that you're, you know, so we get trust issues. Well, if we are going to walk with God, we're going to have to get over our trust issues and have fellowship one with another. Hello? All right, guys, ring it up out there because, I mean, that's, that's still, that's the truth. John, 1 John chapter 1, verse 3 says, That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. So as believers, we need to have fellowship one with another. And fellowship one. We go back to 1 John 1, 7 again. If we walk in the light as he's in the light, we have fellowship one with another. Hallelujah. Uh, Hebrews 10, 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Baby, let me tell you, the day is approaching. Hello? I said the day is approaching. And we need fellowship one with another. Yes, we need, and that's, this is why Remote cannot become the new normal. I know under extreme circumstances, we got to do what we got to do. And thank God we were able to meet uh, almost, well, starting in March of 2020, for nine weeks, we met totally remote um, because we, we had no place to meet. And then we, then, then uh, our area pastor friend allowed us to use their church. And we used that up until December 20th um, of this year, past year. Uh, a year and eight months, uh, or a year and seven months, we use that church. Can we go check that? Um, we did that for uh, 19 months. And now we're, we're just, just for a few weeks, like four weeks right here, three to four weeks, we're going to be remote. Um, but that can't be the new normal. Everybody's saying, it's the new normal. It can't be. Why? We need to have fellowship one with another. And let me tell you something. Personally, I do not like texting. I do not like, um, I don't like remote. I, I've done it because it was necessary to be able to stay connected and to 
I share the truth and the preach, keep preaching. I like in-person contact. And we need that. Hard to greet each other with a holy kiss remotely. And you can put the little icon, emoticon up there if you want to. That's not the same thing. Hello. Um, we need to be together. It's important. And we and, and listen, and our church, our church is so awesome. I'm just going to tell you, our church is so awesome. We don't have any junk going on. We don't have any undercurrent going on. Um, you know, we've had that in the past. That's why we, we had a, a, a split years ago. Um, undercurrents going on. People, people doing this and that. Um, but we still, even because with that happening, maintain having fellowship. We need each other. A threefold cord is not easily broken. Amen. Iron sharpens iron. And in order to affect it, listen, you need people there that when you're struggling can come and give you a word of encouragement and stand with you in faith and undergird you in your walk with the Lord and encourage you in the Lord. Hello. It's vital to, the, to, to you as a believer. And that's why our church loves to major on fellowship. Now, and I say major. One of our, 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 our priorities, let me put it that way, we have a priority of having fellowship. Now, when we get back to being in person Sunday morning and Wednesday night, <clears throat> one of the things we were doing before is we, we would have Wednesday night, once a month we'd have Wednesday night, you know, uh, a dinner before church, chicken and pastry, spaghetti, you know, something. Uh, we would do uh, taco night, something. We would come up with some meal that we could have and everybody come together, and we would fellowship. And if it cut into a little bit of the service time, fine. Why? Because that fellowship is important to the strength of the believer. Hello? Um, we would do what we call Fifth Sunday Fellowships. We would have Sunday night services by all, all the time back then. But on um, on uh, the fifth Sunday of, of a month, there was four of those a year, we would not have the Sunday night service, and we'd have a fellowship after church, some kind of meal, everybody fellowship. We wanted to make it a priority for us to fellowship because we need <coughs> we need those relationships with one another. And we need the bonding and we need the encouragement one from the other to walk with God effectively. We're not, we're not lone islands. We're not the lone ranger. Hello. We're the body of Christ. And every, we, we, are, we, we are part of a body where every part supplies its need, purpose. Go to Ephesians real quick. We'll, we'll, um, so you see, walking with God will mean walking by faith, walking in the spirit, walking in the light, and then walking in fellowship one with another. Can you say amen out there? Ephesians 4, 16, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that by, by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, making increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. One of the things that drew me, um, when I got saved, I had been out from out of church for, for a few years. Um, you know, I, I, I'd gone to church all the time. Um, you know, in, in growing up, we went to church every Sunday and, um, you know, we had let, we had been in two of the three Pentecostal holiness churches in my town. And, um, I, I was work, I was in college and I was working on Sundays at, at, uh, the barbecue restaurant Parker's down in Greenville. And, um, so I wasn't going to church on Sunday, stopped going. And, um, I'm telling you, I, I, um, I graduated from community college as a computer programmer, got a job programming, and so I wasn't working for the restaurant anymore. I would cater parties for them. I would, I would go do you know, stuff for them occasionally, but I wasn't working there anymore. Um, I was uh, working my full-time programming job. And um, while I was there, God really began to deal with me um, about giving my life to him. And I went through about a month and a half of, of struggling with committing my life to him, but I, I did. 
And uh, by that time, we were over the, the third Pentecostal Holiness Church, the family was. And um, started going to church there regularly. Hallelujah. And I was trying to remember why I was going down that path on the fellowship. How I got there on fellowship. One of the, yes, one of the things that attracted me to that church so much, um, and if anybody from that from First PH in Greenville is listening, Brother J. Melvin Moore, probably the most loving man I ever met. He loved the Lord. I mean, he loved the Lord. He had a Sunday school class. He just loved people. I mean, that man loved humanity. And... Um, you know, I, I regret for him that he never got to do his, his dream, which was to go to the Navajo Reservation and, and minister there for uh, his retirement years. Um, but he, he was just a loving man. That love drew me. And you see, when we want to walk with God and please God and honor God, and we have that fellowship, and we're supplying one to another by our fellowship to we're edified in love, that love is discernible by people outside the kingdom. Hello. And so that's why it's it's good to break bread together and spend time together. And iron sharpen iron. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Well, we just we uh we thank God. Hallelujah. Brother Bill's right. Where you go to church is a matter of life and death. Hallelujah. Um the time to receive our Sunday morning offering. Um you you have options. Um you can you can use PayPal, or you can use um, Cash App. If you want to mail a check, contact us, um, and um, just just contact us and um, OB. If you're on Facebook, you can contact us now what by Messenger, and we'll send you the address um, where you can mail that um, directly to us if that's what you want to do. But it's time to give. Praise the Lord. You know, uh, I know we're remote, but um, big changes are coming. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and um, we need to keep flowing and going with God. Hallelujah. You know, Jesus said, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. And we're thankful to God for the promises of God. You cannot outgive God. I'll never forget one of our members a number of years ago coming and sitting in my office and telling me they cannot afford to tithe. And I looked at him and I said, you can't afford not to tithe. Hardest thing I've ever told anybody um, along that lines. Um, you can't afford not to tithe. And they started tithing in a mess. And now God has blessed them. I mean, um, financially doing like completely different. As a matter of fact, it wasn't long after they started tith uh, she started tithing that got a raise, got a promotion. Hallelujah. And in particular job that the person has, that not too long ago, they released almost everybody that works for that place except her and one other person. Tither. Hallelujah. So <clears throat> you can never outgive God. You can never outdo God. You can never, you can never Go wrong giving to God and tithing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, uh, let's go ahead and pray. Father, we thank you as the people bring the tithe and offerings to the storehouse. And, and uh, right now, giving it electronically, we thank you. They're blessed. We thank you. You open up heaven's windows and you empty out on them blessings. They don't have room enough to receive. We thank you that there are delights from land. They lend to many and don't borrow. Hallelujah. The devourer is rebuked for their sake. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. We're so glad we, you joined us today. <clears throat> I mean, I know the service is a little bit shorter um, in remote. This kind of seems to be the nature of the animal. Um, don't get used to it. Get me in a pulpit and a building in front of people that I can go like Paul. And I, I don't mind having a few dead raising services. Hallelujah. I'm being, I'm being silly now. Glory to God. But we love you. God bless you. Don't forget Tuesday night prayer. Wednesday night midweek service. E.W. Kenyon's Bible in the Light of Redemption. Uh, we move into the incarnation this week. <coughs> I 
Until we meet again, remember these words from 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4, that whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. We love you. God bless you. See you next time here, Faith and Victory Church online.